So this year we're back up to full mark allocation for paper two. In this video, I'm gonna summarize GCSE Geography paper two from AQA for the summer exams of 2023. This is my breakdown of the GCSE Geography Paper 2. Now you'll be sitting this exam on Friday the 9th of June 2023 in the morning session. It's an hour and a half and it's worth 88 marks. Now once again this exam is back up to 88 marks and an hour and a half. So this means you're back to full AQA specification. So it's more important than ever that you make sure you revise all the relevant sections. Before we get into the exam content, make sure you've checked out some of my other exam paper videos and resources. My last minute mocks resource covers papers one and two and is designed to save you time. It replicates the AQA exam paper format and provides you with model answers. The greatest strength about last minute mocks is it doesn't require any writing. So again, hopefully this will elevate your exam answers to the next level. Check out the links above or in the description below for more information. All pupils will complete urban issues and challenges and the changing economic world units. When you get to the challenge of resource management unit, there will still be generic questions on resource management, and then you choose to complete one unit from either food, water, or energy. To begin with, students should have a good understanding of the term urbanization and what that actually means. They should have also studied urbanization rates and understand that overall there is an increase in urbanization across the world. This is due to many factors such as migration, and natural increase, but you should also understand push and pull factors. Also, the terms rural to urban migration should also be considered as well as the differences between internal and international migration. All pupils should have looked at an example of an LIC or NEE city across the world, such as Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, Mumbai in India, or Lagos in Nigeria. My students have looked at Rio. For each case D, you'd have a good knowledge of the location of the city as well as some basic facts and stats about this area. You should be aware of the main social challenges such as healthcare, education, water supply and energy supply. Also understanding of the economic challenges we may face in this area such as employment or unemployment and crime. And finally the environmental challenges in the area such as air pollution, traffic congestion, water pollution and waste pollution. As well as looking at possible solutions to all of the above challenges, you should have also reviewed strategies for dealing with the slums, shanty towns or favelas. Moving on to UK urban challenges, and you should start with your basic knowledge of the UK and the distribution of the UK cities. You will look at case studies such as London, Bristol or Liverpool. Again, you start off with general background information on the area. No basic facts such as the population of the area, the ethnic diversity, then start looking at redeveloped areas such as Shoreditch in London. You should also consider the economic changes in the area and how that has affected employment, the new industries in the area, as well as the differences between primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary industries. When looking at this city, you need to recognise the different transport across the city. Again, are the transport systems sufficient for that area and this can include public transport such as buses, the underground, bikes, cross rail. Urban greening is important for several different factors and you should be understanding those such as the mental health benefits of green spaces uh, as well as how it can affect the climate and flooding in an area. When studying these cities it's also easy to forget that there is lots of urban inequality in these areas. That includes social deprivation of areas and again understanding the data when comparing areas across the city. There is also a problem with housing, so you should have considered new developments in housing. Again, how this affects the rural urban fringe and urban sprawl of an area, as well as considering are they building on brownfield sites or greenfield sites. Lastly, we're looking at pollution. So again, that is including air pollution and waste, which are the main issues that we have in the UK cities. You should finish looking at your UK city, looking at an area where major regeneration has occurred. Again, my pupils have studied Lower Lee Valley in East London, which was the Olympic site. 
This is a brownfield site, and again, it's created lots of social changes and opportunities. When looking at the London case study, this has created lots of homes in the area. It's developed more sports facilities for the community to use, as well as increased transport links. This has also created lots of economic opportunities, such as employment, as well as changes to the environment, such as urban greening and increased parks, cycling and pedestrian routes. The last section of urbanisation, we look at an example of urban sustainability, and my pupils have studied Freiburg in Germany. We now look at section B, which is the changing economic world unit. Now it's important that you recognise the differences that this has to the urbanisation unit. When we're talking about urbanisation, we're generally looking at cities and city environments. But when we look at the changing economic world unit, we're looking at countries and again how their economy has changed the quality of life in that country. We start off defining what we mean by quality of life and how that impacts people. So when we're looking at the changing economic world, every topic we look at you should consider how that impacts people's quality of life. We can break that down into economic, physical, social and psychological factors. And again, we should have an understanding of LICs, NEEs and HICs around the world. And again, the differences between primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary industries. We then move on to start looking at how we can measure development. So again, you may be presented with a map of the development of the world. So you should have an understanding of interpreting what you see on these maps. When we look at the measures of development, the Human Development Index is one of the best ways of measuring how developed countries are, and that's also known as the HDI. You should also demonstrate understanding of the demographic transition model, which is also known as DTM, which shows the different stages of development a country has gone through. You may have also looked at uneven development and possibly the Gini coefficient, which shows the inequality within each country around the world, as well as different methods of reducing the development gap. Transnational corporations, also known as TNCs, aid, and tourism are all methods of reducing the gap and you should have investigated various different examples for each. My pupils have looked at Shell in Nigeria, different aid projects such as debt relief, fair trade and intermediate technologies, as well as tourism in Jamaica, Kenya or Tunisia. You should have then investigated a more in-depth example of an NEE such as Nigeria and how it has developed. Moving on to the changing UK economy and how the different primary, secondary, tertiary and quarterly sectors have developed as well as the industrialisation across the UK. You would have studied the change to the economy and again looked at data and compared this with globalisation. You should also recognise that we are in a post-industrial economy and recognise that this links in with tertiary and quarterly industries. This has developed science and business parks across the country such as Southampton and Cobalt. You should recognise the impacts of industry and what that has on the environment and how this affects changes to the rural landscapes. This has also affected transport infrastructure across the UK and this is also highlighted by the North-South Divide. Lastly, when looking at the UK, you should recognise the links we have with the rest of the world. The final section of Paper 2 is Section C, the challenge of resource management. There will be generic questions on resource management before students then specialise between food, water or energy. So when looking at food, water and energy for the generic section, you need to have just a basic understanding of how demand for food, water and energy has changed in the UK. This may include food miles and carbon footprint. When looking at water, again you may be looking at the changes in water demands, the areas of deficit and surplus as well as water transfer schemes. When looking at energy resources, again, you need to recognize the changes in demand of energy in the UK, where our energy comes from across the UK, and again, how we're trying to change the energy mix across the UK. Once you've completed the generic part of resource management, you will choose either food, water, energy. These optional sections will include questions relating to the rising demand for these resources around the world, how this can lead to conflict, and some of the possible strategies to combat these challenges. So that summarises my breakdown of everything you need to revise for GCSE Geography Paper 2 from AQA that you're going to be sitting on Friday the 9th of June 2023. Make sure you click on the next videos to review my five top tips for students taking GCSE Geography, as well as my last minute MOX resource to give you more exam practice.